Bonds, I think that time can only be fully understood by an observer with the godlike gift of infinite regression. Could you explain infinite regression for us? Roll the film. I'd be more than happy to. As a matter of fact, I came prepared to do just that. Now, here's a painting of a landscape. Now, the artist who painted that picture says something is missing. What is it? It is I myself who was part of the landscape I painted. So he mentally takes a step backward, or regresses, and paints a picture of the artist painting a picture of the landscape. But still something is missing, and that something is still his real self painting the second picture. So he regresses further and paints a third, a picture of the artist painting a picture of the artist painting a picture of the landscape. But because something is still missing, he paints a fourth and a fifth until he paints a picture of the artist painting 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 a landscape. So infinite regression then is... It is the moment when our artist has regressed to the point of infinity and himself becomes part of the landscape he painted and is both the observer and the observed. Well now in that peculiar condition, what would he be observing if he were observing, let's say, time? You would perceive, Mr. Bonds, that time is like a freeway with an infinite number of lanes, all leading from the past into the future, however, not into the same future. A driver in lane A may crash while a driver in lane B survives. It follows that a driver, by changing lanes, can change his future. Now, Mr. Bonds, I do not find it difficult to believe that in the dark and turbulent corridors of outer space, the impact of some distant planetary, even galactic disaster, jumped the apes from their present into ours. And indeed, the proof lies in their arrival among us, and in their spoken, and I repeat, spoken testimony. Thank you very much, Dr. Hesline.